Hey, what's happening, guys? Happy weekend to you. Uh, last week, we did a video where we made a single transistor oscillator by running a uh, basic NPN transistor, a 2N2222, in a reverse avalanche mode, meaning we put the emitter to VCC and the collector to ground, and we left the base disconnected. Well, you guys seem to like that. You like the idea of the uh, simple oscillators. And I'm still challenging you guys. Somebody come up with a simpler oscillator. I'm going to give you another example today. What we're going to do is we are going to take advantage of an inverter. How does an inverter work? Well, you guys should know how an inverter works, right? But if you don't, I'll show you. You put in a 1, you get out a 0. You put in a 0, you get out a 1. That's it. Whatever you put in, you get the opposite of. So, what we can do is we can take a chip. In this case, we're going to use the uh, 74HC14N. That is a Schmidt trigger hex inverter. That means it just has six Schmidt trigger inverters in it. So here's the uh, the symbol for your Schmidt trigger inverter. Okay, we have input, output. They're called A and Y. Now we're going to run it to VCC, and in this case, we're going to give it four volts. The uh, 74HC14N is good up to 6 volts, I think. We're going to do 4 volts. And then, of course, we have ground. Now, what we're going to do is we're simply going to create an RC circuit, a resistor capacitor timing circuit. So, from the output, we will take a resistor and hook it to the input. And then we will also throw a capacitor to ground. So, we are completely unable to tell what the opening state of this will be. It could be high, could be low. Whatever it is, we'll get the opposite here. And what we can do is we can just take that, run it to an LED through another resistor to ground. And we can also, you know, probe it here with our oscilloscope. So let's do that. Ba -ba -ba. Okay. Here we have the IC. This is again the 74HC14, a Schmidt trigger hex inverter. You guys can see that. 14 pin chip, as is all these chips. Pin 14 goes to VCC, pin 7 goes to ground. Next, we are going to take a resistor. In this case, this is a, uh, okay, I'm not going to tell you what it is. I know what it is. Look at those colors. I'll put the answer down below what it is. You tell me what size this resistor is, what value. Anyway, it goes between pins one and two. Now, for our output, we're just going to run a jumper wire from pin two just over to somewhere it doesn't matter where and then finally we're going to take a capacitor it doesn't have to be an electrolytic I'm using electrolytic because they have the largest values this is a hundred microfarad between pin one and ground okay and then as promised there is an LED with a resistor but we'll also look at it on the scope. So let's hook up some power to it. And I'll turn on the bench power supply. And we have ourselves an oscillating circuit. Now, just for fun, well, not just for fun, for knowledge. And for science, what we'll do 
is we'll hook up the, the uh, oscilloscope. Notice I'm always connecting my grounds first. And look at that. Might be a little bit of interplay there, huh? Let's so tell you what we'll do. We will disconnect our output, connect it up to the scope. And then let's rotate up here. Have a look at our uh, output. So we're getting a square wave with some very variable timing. We're looking at about 52 hertz on that. Fairly interesting, isn't it? Now, let's see what happens. Okay, I'm going to disconnect the scope. I'm going to reattach the LED. And now I'm going to put the scope into our output in parallel with the LED. And let's see what happens there. Okay, scope is in parallel with the LED. Some change, not a lot, but there is some. Again, very interesting. All right, let's uh, let's rotate back down to our circuit. I'm gonna shut the power off here for a second and change out this capacitor. This was a uh, hundred microfarad. Let's see what have I got here. Here is a 10 microfarad. So we'll pop that guy in there and see what kind of change that makes to our timing. All right, power back up. Okay, rotate up. And what do we get? Not much difference. Very interesting, isn't it? So, my challenge to you, in addition to creating your own simple oscillator, is to build this circuit. Play around with it. Use different values of resistors and capacitors and make your own oscillator. I think it could be fun. It could be interesting. Anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. Big thanks to you for watching. That's it. I'm out. Peace.